Alright, so this is going to be the first in a series of tutorials about how to make a basic video game. We're going to do Brick Breaker in this one, but the basic premise, the basic structure of this can be used to make a number of different types of games. Uh, but it is a pretty early and pared back version. I've tried to strip away a lot of the stuff that i found on the internet that's frankly overly complicated and seems to be the product of people who don't really understand what's going on. Actually, that's what I've been doing for the last couple of days, and it's taken me a little while to sort of get through it all. So I hope that what we make will be a fairly well-structured program at this point. So we need to start out uh, with a new Java project, and I'll just call this Brick Breaker 2 because I already have one called Brick Breaker, um, but uh, you won't, so you can name it whatever you like. We need to add a new package that will contain all of our classes. It's just good... Uh, practice, as far as I can tell, and you will create a new class called BB Main, which will be our brick break, the main class that will run our entire program. And that's going to be the class that we work on today. So, one thing that we'll do at the beginning is define the size of our class, um, and we'll use these uh, public integers to do that so other classes can see them. Public, static, and static just means we never have to create an instance of the BB main class to use to access these variables. They're owned by the class, the blueprint itself. The factory owns these variables. Public, static, final, int um, width equals 640. And we'll do height equals 480. It seems to be a fairly common ratio. And then we want to create our main method right away. Public static void main string args. And then in the public method, we're going to create um, the window. So we'll just start with JFrame uh, equals, oops, the frame equals new JFrame. and we'll give it a name Brick Breaker. Then we're going to define some attributes, but I forgot to import swing, so we should do import, uh, well, let's just do it the quick way. So hover over JFrame and import JFrame from Java Swing. And then we need to do uh, the frame dot set location relative to null, which should center it, although it's not been working on my computer um, recently, which I'm not quite sure of why. Uh, the frame dot set resizable false. We don't want people to be able to change the dimensions because our game will be based on the dimensions to some extent. Um, game, uh, the frame dot set size and we're just going to use width and height which are the variables that we created up top. Then we're going to say the frame dot set default close operation J frame and this is an enum dot exit which you don't have to understand. I'm not sure I actually need to see if you need to understand that for the AB test. I don't think so. It's sort of like a variable on steroids. Um, and then the frame dot set visible true. And this should make a frame pop up on the screen. Come on. Yeah, but it's just not going to the right place. I think it's because I have two monitors running. Anyway, see if that works for you. Otherwise, you can just set the location with a, a numeric figure. Okay, so the next class we're going to make is the game panel class, uh, which is going to contain sort of the main stuff for our game. It's going to be kind of the a uh, more detailed starting point, so I'll do game panel. And now, this class needs to extend the J panel class. Um, extends J panel. And we'll need to import that. Like the um, drawing, like Java Paint, um, we'll need to be able to repaint our panel that is going to hang on our frame uh, over and over and over and over and over 
And the way we're going to do that was, is with this runnable method that is part of a thread. So I don't think this is entirely necessary, but it seems to be such common practice that I'm just going to go with it. You don't have to understand threads exactly, but what you need to understand is that threads, well, this is what they are. It's not basically what they are. It's what they are. They're processes that can run in tandem, so you can have multiple ones running at a given time. Now, I think the reason you use them in simple games is because they're very common in complex games. In simple games, I don't think they're at all necessary, but I think it's just good practice because later games will need to be running multiple threads at once or big programs will. So we're going to learn a little bit about it with this one, even though I don't think it's 100% necessary. So you can say that your public class game panel extends JPanel. That means it is a type of JPanel, and it needs to implement the interface called Runnable. Now, the runnable interface has a single method called run, and it's, uh, never mind, not that, sorry, implements, I always forget the S, I don't know why, um, implements runnable. Now, uh, it's going to be the method that is called sort of automatically that um, we're going to use to just kind of over and over and over run our game. Um, so now in BB Main, we're actually going to create a thread and a game panel and get it all sort of up and running. It's not going to do anything quite yet, but so we need to contain, create a game panel. Uh, the panel equals new game panel. And we're going to create a thread, thread, the thread equals new thread. And a thread needs to have something runnable to run. So we made game panel runnable, right? It implements the runnable interface. So now we can add the panel to our thread. We say this is the thing that we want you to run over and over and over again. And then we're going to add the panel to the frame. The frame dot add the panel, as you've done before many times. And then we're also going to tell the thread to start. So the thread, the thread dot start. And that just means like, hey, now when I tell you to start, it automatically calls the run method. You don't actually have to call this explicitly, it just calls it. And it does everything in here. And this is going to be where our main game loop is going to be. So I'll change this. This is going to be the game loop that just executes over and over and over and over and over. Why? Okay. I think that's enough for this tutorial, and I'll come back to the next one. We've created the shell of the early classes, and next time we're going to come back and flesh out the game panel class.